Back in the 1960s, American professional football was comprised of two leagues, the National Football League and the American Football League. Competition between these two leagues aided into corporate profitability, which eventually encouraged league owners to consider joining forces. A merger between the NFL and the AFL was agreed upon and set to begin in 1970, and as part of the agreement, there was a championship game held in the seasons leading up to the official merger, in which the best teams from each league played each other at the end of the season. After the merger, the leagues were rebranded as conferences, each still supplying one team to play in the final championship game at the end of the season. Owner of the Kansas City Chiefs at the time, and otherwise intriguing sports pioneer Lamar Hunt, is credited with providing the championship game its current title, the Super Bowl, after observing his children playing with a Super Ball. Good thing they weren't playing with a dead cat. Oh, boy. Oh, he did it. Speaking of bowls, Super Bowl Sunday is second only to Thanksgiving in the amount of food consumed in the United States. I guess there's something about millions of Americans watching giant men in skin-tight spandex that makes us all want to eat Italian food. And while we're screaming our heads off because some dude who we've never met and who isn't even from our city just caught an inflated pig between two cones, advertisers are paying a king's ransom for the opportunity to air some generally forgettable message during the commercial break. Every year, the price for this opportunity gets higher and higher, reaching upwards of $3.5 million for a measly 30 seconds. More sketchy history when we return from a quick break to hear a word from our sponsors. Our beverage is so cold, after just one sip, it will literally fuse your lips together. What are you waiting for? Drink up. Welcome back to our regularly scheduled programming. Yo, this one time in 1993, the NFL reversed the decision to let Arizona host the Super Bowl after the state voted to not recognize Martin Luther King Jr. Day. A few years later, Arizona changed their mind, and the NFL forgave them, once again agreeing to let Sun Devil Stadium host the big game. So the next time you catch grief about watching some silly game, just inform your verbal assaulter that NFL football has the power to end an isolated instance of racism in one state thanks to the financial influence the league spent nearly a century establishing. Or you could always retort with, I've got two words for you, buddy. Spandex. That usually shuts them up. Anyway, the rest of the details are kind of sketchy. Let me know you want me to sketch out in the comment field below. Want to be a total sketchball? Subscribe to Sketchy History and join an elite and growing force of spandex-touting athletes. Peace!